Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is the Acer Swift 7. So this thing comes in at 9.98 millimeters thick. It's very thin, it's less than a centimeter. In fact, it's the thinnest laptop in the world right now. It's black and gold, kind of like the HP Spectre, but instead of going for an elegant theme, this thing's just straight up functional. There's a bit of flex on the casing, partially because the aluminum isn't that thick, but it's also a wide device. It's thin, but the footprint is relatively large. Screen hinge is a little stiff. You can't open it with one hand, at least not easily, but the overall build quality is good. It's got an audio jack and two USB-C ports on the right. You can use either of them to charge it, but that's it for ports. You're gonna to need to use the included adapters if you need HDMI or regular USB connections. You can open it up easily, but there's not much you can upgrade on the inside. You can replace the Wi-Fi card and the SSD. So the stock drive is a 256 gig SATA SSD. It's slower because it's SATA and it's one of the short M2 drives. So replacement drives aren't as easy to find. The screen is great. It's 1080p and covered in Gorilla Glass. It's not a touch screen despite having that glossy finish, but it looks really nice. Very good color gamut and accuracy, nice and bright. Definitely one of the best features of this laptop. The keyboard is decent, not amazing. Its biggest problem is that it's not backlit and a lot of potential buyers might really want that. The keys themselves are smaller, but I got used to it after a couple hours. There are better keyboards on ultra thin laptops out there like the HP Spectre, but this one's not bad. The trackpad is excellent. It uses native Windows drivers, it's glass, it's got a great texture, excellent button mechanics, and the tactile feedback on the click is perfect. It's a little shallow, but it reminds me of MacBook trackpads before they went all force touchy. Now, I know I'm going on and on about the trackpad, but for a lot of Ultrabook users, they don't use mice, and the trackpad experience is clutch. This one nails it. The speakers are located on the bottom, so they're down firing. They have Dolby branding on them and they sound decent. They're better at lower volumes, but they quickly lose audio clarity as you increase the volume. Even at 50%, they start to sound a little fuzzy. Performance wise, it's running a KB Lake Core i5, but this is the Y chip, so it's kind of like the new generation of Core M processors. It'll handle light to moderate tasks comfortably, so any kind of web browsing or word processing or media consumption, that stuff is no problem. But if you have any kind of heavier work like raw photo edits, or if you wanna play even light games, it won't do that well. Now with this reduction in processing power comes a couple nice benefits. First is the heat it generates. Even under load, it never gets uncomfortable to use. So there's no fan and consequently no fan noise. It's essentially a silent computer. And it also has the benefit of really low power draw. This thing only has a 41 watt hour battery and it'll comfortably last seven hours of regular use. A normal Core i5 processor would last noticeably less. Okay, so with the Swift 7, you're getting an extremely thin laptop with reasonable build quality, an impressively color accurate and bright 1080p screen, but it's not touch sensitive. You get a decent keyboard that is spacious, but it's not backlit. You get an excellent trackpad, one of the best in the Ultrabook market. On the inside, we have a KB Lake Y processor and the Intel HD615. They can comfortably handle productivity work and media consumption, but they'll have a tough time keeping up with more demanding tasks. The eight gigs of RAM is soldered on, the 256 gigs of storage is upgradable, and then powering this is a comfortable seven hour battery. Now, I think some people might be worried about the Core Y processor. It's not the fastest thing out there, but I really like the Acer Swift 7. It's basically everything that you would need in an ultra portable productivity machine. It's got all the fundamentals, good screen, battery life, trackpad, Decent keyboard, but it's not backlit. So if that's a deal breaker for you, well, your deal is broken. But if that doesn't bother you, this is a really good machine to take a look at. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.